Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard has issued a stern warning to Israel following the assassination of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniyeh. General Hossein Salami, head of the Guard, declared that Israel is digging its own grave by continuing its aggressive actions. They targeted the revolutionary leader of a freedom-fighting movement, Ismail Haniya, who was after the right to his people's destiny and his occupied lands in another country. They think by doing this, they have reached some success that helps them survive. They are digging their own grave, and they will gradually get themselves buried in these swamps and holes. Addressing a crowd in Tehran on Monday, Salami said that Israelis keep making miscalculations and that once again, they will get punishment from Iran. When it receives a firm response, it will realize it has been wrong. They keep making miscalculations. They repeated this mistake this time too. They will once again get a taste of our punishment. They will find out when, where, and how we will retaliate. It is ambiguous and indeterminate. Salami said that Israel has formed a vortex around themselves referring to various Iran-backed militants near the Jewish state. They, Israelis, have formed a vortex of fire around themselves. Israel has turned into an intolerable entity around the world, an isolated, unpopular, unreliable entity without any dignity and power, and that is between life and death. Also, Nasser Kanaani, spokesperson for Iran's foreign ministry, asserted on Monday that Iran holds an intrinsic right to protect its security and to punish the aggressor, which here is obviously Israel. The Islamic Republic of Iran, in using its intrinsic right based on international rules and regulations, will definitely take serious deterrent actions to guarantee its security and punish the aggressor with power, decisiveness, and toughness. Kanaani also mentioned that Iran will punish Israel, but it will be under the purview of the guidelines under UN Charter. We'll aim our efforts to boost stability and peace in the region and will regulate our measures to punish the aggressor within the framework of the UN Charter and rules and regulations of international law. These warnings came after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a stern warning to Iran, stating that whoever harms Israel will pay a heavy price. Iran and its proxies seek to surround us with a stranglehold of terror on seven fronts. Their visible aggression is insatiable, but Israel is not helpless. We are determined to stand against them on every front, in every arena, far and near. Anyone who murders our citizens, anyone who harms our country will be held accountable. He will pay a very heavy price. The current tension has been exacerbated following the deaths of a senior Hezbollah commander in Lebanon and Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Iran. In a video address from Tel Aviv, Israeli Army spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari accused Iran of financing terrorist organizations across the Middle East and backing smuggling of explosives into Israeli territory. For years, Iran has been arming and financing terrorist organizations across the Middle East, including smuggling explosives into Israeli territory for terror attacks against civilians. The IDF and ISA have already thwarted numerous attacks in which Claymore-type explosives were smuggled into the country's territory. We are determined to continue acting against Iranian terrorism, wherever it may be. Hagari also announced a new system through which text messages would be sent to inform the public of potential threats. Today, the Home Front Command launched a new system called Personal Message. It's a world-class system that sends defensive messages against large-scale emergencies that erupt. The alert is sent to the mobile phones that are under threat, without the need for an application and without the need to perform any action on the part of the citizen.
Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant also assured the readiness of Israeli Defense Forces in case a new war breaks out in the region. However, spoken earlier in the day, his rhetoric was similar to that of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We are prepared very strongly in defense, on land and in the air, and we are ready to move quickly to attack or to respond. We will exact a price, as we have been doing in recent days from the enemy. If he dares to attack us, he will pay a heavy price. Meanwhile, in the southern Beirut neighborhood of Dahye, businesses opened and traffic jams continued as normal. Even next to the building that was hit in an Israeli airstrike last week that killed Fuad Shukur, the Hezbollah commander, and six other people. Nearby, Saad Baden was surveying the damage to his shops that offered internet and sound systems. His wife and children were forced to move in with relatives in another neighborhood of Beirut. All of what I had was here, my house was here, and it was destroyed. My family and I were on the verge of dying, but God gave us a new life. Both of my shops were destroyed. My car was destroyed. So if I want to leave, I have nothing. Everything belongs to God, but now I have nothing. Usually, someone has their house in one place and their work in another, but for me, there is nothing left. And I say, thank God. At least I have sympathized with the people of Gaza by experiencing 1% of what they are living through. God is generous. As both sides brace for potential further escalation, the world watches closely, fearing a broader and more destructive regional conflict. The fragile peace in the Middle East hangs in the balance, with the prospect of a renewed and intensified confrontation looming large.